All right. I think I can say for Bears fans, generally speaking, generally speaking, <clears throat> most everyone is pretty aligned in that the coaching staff sucks. Rare is the person you're going to see that will try to say that Luke Getze is actually a solid to quality offensive coordinator. Because if they do, you would mock them and you should mock them. And at this point, people saying that should know that they're going to get mocked, should get mocked, because they deserve to get mocked. And then you go to head coach Matt Eberflus, you say, well, what about the defensive coordinator? Well, it's one of the fucking same because of the Allen Williams situation earlier in the year. Golly. But Matt Eberflus, even when you listen to him speak in press conferences, he can't answer a fucking question. I used to think Matt Nagy's rambling, bambling, bumbling fucking answers were horrible. Holy shit. Look at Eberflus. Terrible. Well, yeah, he's he's out, but he could play, but he's doubtful, but there's a chance. What the fuck does any of that even mean when he's talking about Justin Fields and his thumb? Holy shit. But, but the problem here is, right, is like Bears fans are usually pretty comfortable about, in general, in general, getting to a point and being very comfortable with moving on from head coaches. Right? Generally speaking, they feel more comfortable with that. I don't know if it's like the, it's much easier to look at them, hold them up to a dick or lovey standard, quickly see they don't match that standard, and you're fucking over them. But Bears fans generally, I think, are aligned, right? You're seeing very few excuses for Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze. The excuses are few and far between, not enough, nobody's going out of their way to kind of peddle that agenda. Nor should they be. Because this coaching staff should be shown the door. Well, just after the next game, end of the season, somewhere in between, it needs to happen. You say it's an overreaction, it's a reactionary thing. Hey, you know what? When a coaching staff is 6-21, and 21, they're 3-7 and seven this year. They were 3-14 and 14 last year. Fuck them. Reactionary my ass. What I can't tolerate, though, is the level and depth with which people are going to still make excuses for Justin Fields and Ryan Poles. I'll start with Ryan Poles. If you think, for whatever reason, you can have your own opinion, it can be wrong, but you can have your own opinion, fine. If you think there's still a chance that Justin Fields can be the guy, if you still think that Justin Fields can be a star or superstar NFL quarterback, but you are pointing to the support system, the support structure around Justin Fields and not looking at the fucking general manager that put that support system around Justin Fields, I don't know what the fuck is motivating you at that point. Because it's clearly not football logic. It's got to be non-football things. Like, are we looking at this shit like an Oreo sandwich and we see the white filling in the middle and it's easier to just pick on them? Oh, they fucking suck. I completely agree. I'm screaming that they should be fucking gone too. But how the fuck is the coaching staff the problem and not the goddamn idiot in the front office that hired said coaching staff and brought in these fucking players that have helped this team go to a three and second re seven record after a season where the Bears started off the draft with the top pick, had some good draft pick capital, and the most salary cap space. Making these excuses for Ryan Poles about, well, you know, he had to sit there and deal with the dead cap money that was there from Ryan Pace. Oh, boo fucking who? A couple years ago, the Eagles were fucking horrendous in terms of dead cap. And they managed to quickly turn it around and fucking build themselves into a legit championship contender that almost won the Super Bowl last year. Get the fuck out of here with that. Excuses, fucking excuses. Enough with the excuses. How about the goddamn results? And Ryan Pulse's results are terrible. 
Six and 21. You are what your record says that you are, right? Additionally, this dumb fucker had the most salary cap space to work with, and he decided, I want to give Tremaine Edmonds a shit ton of money, just a bit under what we would have had to give Roquan. And it's one thing you want to say the Roquan thing. I'm not even going to bring that up other than just as like a comparison. Like, if you're going to pay that much, you might as well just pay Roquan. But if you wanted to move on from Roquan because he didn't fit, which is dumb, that's fine. They're paying Tremaine Edmonds all this goddamn money. Of course, now he's hurt on top of it, but he wasn't very good. In fact, he sucked when he did play earlier this year. Oh, well, he hid turn turnovers. Yeah, Jack Sanborn's doing the things that Tremaine Edmonds is supposed to do playing in the middle. What the fuck are you talking about? Talking about where Ryan Poles couldn't fix everything in one fucking offseason. He could have done more than he fucking did. He had a lot of resources, a lot of financial capital, a lot of draft pick capital, and he didn't do a good enough job, period. And if you believe that the coaches need to be fired, why in the fuck wouldn't the general manager that brought them in need to be fired the same? Well, that's not fair because Ryan Poles was given a list of finalists by freaking Hellas Hull and he ran with it. Oh, you know, that sounds like a Bears football thing to do. But he still signed off on it, right? He still went with those three. He still ultimately pulled the trigger on Matt Eberflus. Like, the second he did that, I knew this guy was an idiot. And the reason I knew he was an idiot, because that's an idiotic move. The priority was to build around Justin Fields, not bring back the glory of the Lovey Smith days. Build up that defense, bitches! Enough fucking excuses about Ryan Poles. I don't want to hear about injuries. I don't want to hear about, well, the first year he had to tear it down to the studs. That was his choice. He was supposed to set himself up to do big things for 2023. Is what the standard should have been. And he fucking failed. He face planted. Well, he didn't have the say in terms of coaches. He fucking hired him. He's the general manager. Suck my cock. If Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze need to be shown the door, and they absolutely do, then the dumbass general manager needs to be shown the door too. And then we get to Justin Fields. And this shit is really starting to jump the shark. You got ding-dongs on Twitter and other social media posting videos about Justin Fields coming through in the clutch, and they're posting shit from the Ohio State Clemson game back in the Trump administration! The fuck's wrong with you? Oh, when he, when he got hurt, he, he was towards the top in touchdowns. Yeah, he was also towards the top in interceptions. <laughs> like, come on. His sack rate is atrocious. His completion percentage is still below average. Three years in, he's consistently demonstrated he can't throw with anticipation. He almost refuses to throw with anticipation. When have you seen him really, truly come through in the clutch? And here come the excuses. Well, the receiver dropped the ball. Well, the defense. Yeah, and some of that shit happens. Yeah, and sometimes that sucks. And that's certainly not all on Justin Fields. But there are a number of times late in games that this guy has failed to come through. You can't excuse and defend every fucking thing. Like if you want to say, well, it's a fluke injury with the thumb. It's not so much a fluke because every year with this guy, it's been something. And the number one most important ability for a quarterback is availability. And Justin Fields doesn't have that on lock. And I swear to God, I'm seeing so many fucking excuses when it comes to Justin Fields about... Will, you know, the talent around him on offenses and all that good. Oh, well, well, pump the brakes. I thought people were talking about this could be a top 10 offense this year. All of a sudden now, the offense isn't good enough? Everybody seems to think Darnell Wright's pretty good. Everybody seems to think Tevin Jenkins is damn good. Everybody seems to think Braxton Jones is solid. Everybody seems to think that Cody White here... And mostly Lucas Patrick suck. But that's 60% of the offensive line. That ain't too bad. A lot of teams wish they had that. A lot of Bears fans are big on Cole Komet. 
think he's a top five to ten tight end in the league. Okay, let's give benefit of the doubt. Let's say he is. How many quarterbacks in the league don't have a tight end like Cole Komet? Two thirds. DJ Moore, top flight NFL wide receiver. He's got Komet. He's got more in the passing game. He's got arguably the best running back room in the league. Even when Khalil Herbert goes down, you've got Deontay Foreman. You've got Roshan Johnson. You've also got, when you talk about the running game itself, Justin Fields and what he can do as a, as a ball carrier, as a quarterback. Like, I realize, damn it, that this isn't the 2007 Patriots, the 2013 fucking Broncos, 2018 Chiefs. But this offense isn't scrub shit. And the bottom line is, is they're not good enough. And they haven't been good enough. You could say, well, Tyson Bage just started the last four games. That's fair. But they also had other games with Justin Fields as a starter, and they totally sucked dick. Oh, you got to do this, and you got to do that. If you've got to have the situation around your goddamn quarter books so absolutely pristine and perfect, you're already getting the answer to whether or not he's the fucking guy he's not. With the talent around Justin Fields, that is enough for him to be better than he is. Coaching staff be damned. Not every great quarterback always gets to play with great coaches and they got to figure out a way to get the most out of it. The amount of excuses I'm seeing talking about situation and scenario. Well, the coaches suck. The offensive line's not good enough. The pass catchers aren't good enough. They're not elite, but God damn it, at some point in time, they're better than what they've shown. And that, yes, is partially at least responsible for the starting quarterback. The blame for the problems in the organization with the Bears starts with the McCaskey family. It's Ted Phillips, and then it's fucking Ryan Poles, and then it's the coaches, and then it is Justin Fields because he touches the ball more than anybody else. He plays the most important position. If that bothers you, get a fucking grip, get a clue, get over it. When you have to start selectively choosing bullshit misleading clips to try and make dumb ass points when you got to go back to his college days in fucking during the Trump administration you know you're barking up the wrong tree there are no more excuses for Justin Fields if he's back starting on Sunday he's got seven games really he shouldn't he's already shown he's not the guy but benefit of the doubt right no more excuses. I don't want to fucking hear it. No more trying to spin it. Like, hold him to the standard of, if he plays well, he played well. And if he doesn't, fucking talk about the fact that he didn't play well. And don't make a million bajillion goddamn Bears football excuses for why he did it. He's not Trubisky. He's not Cutler. He's not Grossman. He's not McSuckass. He's fucking Justin Fields. And as special as many of these Bears fans seem to think that he is, they have this kind of paternalistic nature. It's kind of weird and creepy. Like he's not going to sleep with you. So get off his cock. If he's that special, why doesn't he show it more? If he's that special, he should be coming in these last couple, last seven games and lighten the damn NFL up. You know that's not going to happen. Guarantee. Guarantee. The fucking excuses for these guy, this guy are still going to be there as strong as ever. They need to stop.